Welcome to the Scottish Property Podcast. This is a show where we aim to educate, inspire and entertain through real life stories and interviews from people in the Scottish property community. As always, thanks for listening and give us a follow on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Remember to join us at our monthly networking events on the first Wednesday of every month. Tickets are available on our website. So without further ado, we'll just cut straight into this week's podcast. Okay, Matt Morrison, welcome to the Scottish Property Podcast. Thanks so much for having me, guys. Welcome, Matt. Good Great to see you. Now, I've seen a bit of you on uh, Instagram, social media and all that. You're making waves and sourcing and you've built up a, a good business there, I believe. And also just lately, I've seen a press article uh, which was talking about how you've just started up your own estate agency as well. So just describe to our listeners and us as well, because we want to get into your backstory about what it is you do in property. Yeah, so it's a sort of three-way model that I've carved out now. Um, so simply, when when you're dealing with off-market properties, um, we can either buy it or it'll be sourced onto a client. And now we've got the facility to put it on the, the market as well. So it's just about finding the right exit for the seller, really. Nice one. And what age are you? I'm 24. I was 24 two weeks ago. Nice, mate. Nice. <laughs> nice Good we, we do get We do get quite a lot of young folk in here. It does give... It actually come out of these interviews feeling very energised and inspired because I always think, do you know what? Oh, if I could just roll back the years, maybe in our 20 years, imagine what I could, what level I could be at. I and think this it's <laughs> a lot easier to start when you're younger because you don't have the responsibilities yeah. that other people do. Like yeah. you don't have wife, kids, mortgages and things like that. So And I imagine yeah. a typical working day for you would probably be about 16 hours or something like that, do you know? <laughs> yeah, and it just feels like normal now, to be and honest. It's just constant, seven days a week, WhatsApp, everything like that. And like so. you say, you don't have a wife yeah. nagging at you <laughs> and you don't have Kids. <laughs> yeah, and play with me. That's nah, yeah. good. I mean, you want to get that 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 pace early in your in your career. Make some moves. Make some waves. Yeah. Um. So, t- so t- take us back to how you, kind of how you got started. Yeah. So I, I left school at sixteen with two qualifications, and I was sort of buzzing around, and I was like, oh, like no direction or no idea what I was going to do, and I actually got a modern apprenticeship at the Scottish government, um, just doing like sort of admin stuff, and it was good money when I left school. Like it was like seventeen and a half grand. Like, like as a sixteen year old, it's pretty decent going and then after a while it just sort of wears you down like being in the civil service so did you ever meet Patrick Harvey? (laughs) No I don't think I did (laughs) Um, no way too junior for that but um, yeah so just started not enjoying it and then I I lost my dad fairly young so all of a sudden like I probably had like maybe two years worth of my salary in the bank and I was thinking like you know what am I going to do with this money that means I don't need to work here and my dad died before he managed to get his pension so that was like a bit of an eye opener for me yeah. as well. Like he's worked his whole life and never got access to that. What age were you when you lost uh, your dad? Nineteen. Well, what yeah. happened? If you don't mind me asking, he, he just he just died, Nick. Yeah. yeah, he was just an alcoholic and and died unfortunately. So right. it's it's just it's part of life. So he, my mom and dad were separated, so I didn't mm. didn't see him that much. But it was a real eye op- op- opener for me being so young, being like um, you know I, I don't want to be stuck in a job right. my whole life working for someone else to, to potentially never know what's around the corner. So it's quite an important life life lesson at such a probably quite a crucial age, isn't it? Like you yeah. could go and go one one direction, not the other. Yeah. I think Did like, I give you a shake up then? A, a million percent. Use. Yeah, a million percent. And like when you're quite young and you lose your dad, and I've spoke to a few other people about this, it's almost like no one's coming to save you. Mm. So you've got to do something about it. So that was quite a crucial kind of turning point in my life and, and ever since then I just kind of stumbled on property thought I was going to do buy to let but when you're sort of 19, 20 without a job you know you, the <laughs> buy to let mortgages is probably not going to happen yeah, so yeah. I, I have did you go through any training courses or YouTube no, videos no, or no training no paid for training at all right. so I've sort of just kind of taught myself from the likes of YouTube and books and audio books and stuff mm-hmm. like that so um, and then kind of finding people that are doing what you're doing and just asking them intelligent questions and, and people are quite willing to share stuff with you how did you build that network then how did you start off building those people that you yeah, sort of became I, into contact with I, I honestly don't know I, I, I sort of single out people that I see online mm. and then I meet with them and then they open other doors for you mm-hmm. and, and I'm really lucky to sort of work with guys that have been doing it like 25 30 years so mm. Any problems that I've got or any questions, I just pick up the phone and most of the time they answer it. So just right place at the right time a lot of the time, I think it is. Uh, these people that you're talking about there, is, have these become people that you do business with or business partners? Or, yeah, or people so that it, you... I work with quite a lot of older guys that, that have been doing it a while. So I'll sell some of their portfolio off now and again. But most of the time we just like sort of go and play golf and I've just came back from Dubai with one of the guys. So it's, but how have um, these relationships come about then? I mean, they don't just happen. Yeah, do you know that, what I mean? Honestly, it, mainly sort of referring 
referrals from other of like people like that and like people are saying oh, you should meet with so and so you should meet with so and so and I've been doing this full time for three years now so right. eventually you do pick up contacts from different people mm -hmm. don't you mm -hmm. but really lucky to, to be working with some of the guys that I am yeah okay yeah. so so obviously you know Stephen started you out by going right back to, to school and all that I mean so it's, if we actually look at it, it's, it's quite a short timeline. Yeah. So you quit the government job. Uh huh. Yeah. What what age were you? Uh, I would have been nineteen, going on twenty, I think. Right. Okay. And from then it was straight into the property. Yeah. So because because I lived at home, I had a BMW one series on finance, and that was about as much as my outgoings were. So yeah. I sort of worked in a couple of warehouses. I, I worked in Amazon warehouse half past one in the morning till half past eleven the next day on the night shift. Yeah. Um, hated that as well, obviously. Um, I worked in farm foods freezer section, which was minus thirty, big balaclava <laughs> and stuff like that, stacking boxes of frozen chips. Uh -huh. um, I done door to door sales, but like the whole time I was learning about property, and I was on YouTube like every single day, just right. like taking in as much as I possibly could. Um, and then from there, sort of prompted me out to go and viewing properties and stuff like that. And at the time, Joseph Talk was was quite big. I think yeah. you guys have had him on before. Yeah, well, um, Joseph. Yeah, aye. and he was doing quite a lot on the borders, which is where I'm from. Okay, um, so he kind of took you. He came on your radar, and you're yeah. like, "Wait a minute, there's something here." Exactly, and you see people like you see the fees that you can make and things like that, and you think, you know, this is this is probably the route that I'm going to have to go down, only for like the lending side of things, and then maybe do buy to let eventually. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then once you start in property sourcing, it does become quite addictive. Um, and you know, if you're half decent, uh, you can do very very well out of it. So, did you reach out to Joseph then? Did he have any yeah words I, I, of advice or loads of stuff? And, and as I say, most people are willing to help you I think mm. particularly probably when you're younger um, and I learned an awful lot from him I sold quite a few deals through his mailing list and sort of co-sourced with him for probably six months to a year right okay um, and then once you've Was done that it, round the borders then uh, cause yeah those ones with Joseph would be round the borders mm. yeah but just stuff that was local you local your local market that you knew you could find new, new just areas just and learn stuff on the market um, yeah. and just viewing loads of stuff on the market and I always tell people now like I, I was viewing multiple multiple properties every single week and because the market was hot and you were hearing all this chat I wasn't putting any offers in for most of the time so it was good practice and in, in going out and, and pricing up refurbs and doing the numbers on stuff but just not pulling the trigger on anything right. and looking back now if I offered on most of them you know I would yeah, have done yeah. you know a few a few more deals earlier on so just, just a confidence thing just like uh, yeah like mm. a confidence thing and because I'm from that area I know some of the estate agencies yeah. estate agents sorry so it's like a, it's a bit of an awkward conversation going in and asking for for 25% uh, below market value sometimes <laughs> especially when you're sort of I don't know 19 20 walking around with a Costa cup at these viewings so <laughs> yeah. it's, um, it's it's and, like a and mental did, thing and did it? you ever get the feeling that that when you turned up or requested a view and they were like oh not him again or something like that you know was it uh, or did people were they still quite happy even though you were putting in the cheeky offers and all that were they yeah. still happy to I think, take you seriously I think because I had some money in the bank they, mm -hmm. they, they probably took me more seriously because like I, I originally I was going out to buy stuff for, for myself until I found out that I couldn't probably get a mortgage so I never really had and, and this goes across the board I've never really had any problems with my age at all and I think it's probably because I've put so much time into actually learning about what it is mm -hmm. that I'm talking about and, and going mm -hmm. about things probably in the right way um, talking with authority and a bit of knowledge and a bit of, yeah exactly yeah. To, talk, yeah. talk to us about the first steps in setting up as a source agent then because like a lot of people listen to this that we get a lot of young listeners as well who are looking to get into this and obviously you've got the network source and network and that yeah. and see there's a lot of members joined as well but obviously it just doesn't happen overnight right and a lot of people say well what comes first you know is it the investors do you need to get the investors or do you need to get the deals you yeah. know what I mean so what's your top tips for people starting out I think um, probably just gravitate towards people that have already got half of the puzzle I think mm -hmm. like you don't have to do everything yourself and just what I'd done with Joseph when I got started I would go out and find the deals and, and he would sell them mm -hmm. um, and you know you still get 50% of the sourcing fees you still do well out of it but probably more importantly than that is you see the process and you see how the process works and you get to identify but what kind of deals actually do sell so probably what I would do is, is just the same exactly way that I've done it just go out there and try and find some deals and just work with people who have already got investors because there's probably not that many people that's going to want to work with you until you've done some business but if you can get a bit of a track record and say look we sourced this we sourced that mm. um, that's probably the way that I would do it 
it's just slow sourcing. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, they, I don't think you, everybody yeah. always panics about like getting compliant and doing all this and fancy websites and mm -hmm. stuff like that where I would just focus on what yeah. actually makes money and what's going to take you forward. Go and find the deals, yeah. Get good to find the deals. Which is why I was I was very inspired when we had a recent chat with uh, Chris DL who is also a sourcer as well. He's just kind of like, he just goes out and does it. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't get kind of bogged down. You can tell, you know, he's, you can tell that he's a bit rough around the edges. You know, he's not the polished article, <laughs> but that's what I like about him. You can tell he's just a grafter yeah. and he grafts and he goes out and finds all the grunters, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, you can just tell that he's just, just like you say, just, Take the action, Just basically. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think me and Chris we sold a, a six unit portfolio, and I think we've maybe done two or three others. Yeah. So I don't know what that says about me in terms of the grunter type stuff. <laughs> 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 that, well, this is one of the other problems I've got with like property sourcers, right? Like, I don't have a problem with property <laughs> sourcers, but I just think that. Um, from my point of view, I have signed up to all the mailing lists and I have kind of like been thinking, you know, as I'm building a, a lens business and all, I don't have time to go out and find properties. And I thought, right, okay, I'll join these lists and all the rest of it and I'll see what sources. I'll connect with a few sources. But generally just everything that I see that comes to my inbox or that people bring to me is just like pretty much a bag of shite. Yeah. And there's a lot of shite out there. People yeah. are expecting five grand fees for and that. And Equally, I've met new people in property that have paid five grand for the shite. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. So like, how do you have the longevity in a sourcing career? Because if you saw somebody and charge them five grand for a property that's a bag of shite, that's a pretty short lived career, right? Because yeah. you're going to get found out that it wasn't worth the five grand for the sourcing fee yeah. and then they're not going to come back to you. Word spreads fast and all the rest of it. So yeah. what sort of, where do you bring the value as a sourcer? So I think just, just taking the long term view, like a lot of people do, they do live for the sort of moment and the quick buck, don't they? Whereas mm. if you just supply genuine clients, not people on a mailing list with good quality deals and you take care of them and you take care of the full process for them and you don't hide anything from them then right. it's a sustainable business isn't it mm. it's just like anything like i work with sort of 10 11 active buyers that just buy off me quite a lot okay so we've got that relationship there um and it, it means i don't need to go out and try and make all this quick money because when something good comes in it you just goes it. straight out the door half of the puzzle's already solved because um that's I, I interesting don't sell that, bad you, deals. that you say that as well because i the, all the social i've done has been the, the exact same yeah and i always think am i thinking too small should you be generating this massive mailing list and mm -hmm pumping deals at left, right and centre but I think yeah. you, like you say you're losing track of so how good quality I, deals I, are I've got like maybe 2,800 or something like that mm. on a mailing list which is good as a sort of backup option but yeah. I, I much prefer working on like a one to one basis yeah. with people mm. and building that relationship over the long term like you say, I suppose if, if whatever deals you're getting, you know you're exiting. Aye. But then getting something going, oh shit, I can't be an exit. Exactly. Pump on a mailing yeah. list. And all over Instagram mm. and, yeah. and all these Facebook groups and stuff like that. Mm. Whereas, you know, if something's a deal, it's a deal yeah. and it sells. If it's and not I'll a deal, go. then it doesn't sell. Yeah. It's not. What would be a realistic kind of figure? Because you hear about all these like sourcers who are making 20k a month and all the rest of it. Like, what's realistic? Honestly speaking, right? Because we, we like to think <laughs> that, you know, we on a Scottish property podcast, we like to try and be as transparent as possible and give. <laughs> give people a realistic approach yeah. to property and young people who are wanting to get involved in this yeah. so like I know obviously you can make five grand from a deal you can make ten grand from a deal and all the rest of it but yeah. what should realistically if somebody wanted to make a success out of this and say for example they started out in their first after their first year what could they be looking at in terms of making an income you know what would be a realistic target yeah. each month or I think if someone's full time and they're doing it properly if they can't sell what, at least one deal a month then they should probably think about doing something else yeah. so if you, if you think, <laughs> to put it nicely if you think what, one deal a month one deal in four weeks right. is 36 yeah. grand a year just based on a three grand buyer's fee okay mm -hmm. um, so that would cool. be more than realistic I would think I mean it's certainly once you get into it and you put all your time into it then yeah. things do get progressive easier yeah. um, which is you know that is better than what a lot of people are making you know in a full time and, salary especially and at a young age boss and things like that and it's also good fun as well yeah. a lot of the time do you know what I mean it's not sitting at a desk somewhere so and how do you get that credibility then because if you're starting out young guy at 19 20 years old how do you build up that that reputation where people will come back to you and stuff I think it just all comes down to, to learning and, and knowledge like if you know what it is you're talking about and you do a good job and you don't try and screw anybody and you mm. supply them with good quality deals that are genuinely discounted then of course people are going to come back I don't mm. think I've sold a deal to a retained client that's not wanted to come back ever 
And do you buy your own property as well? So we, I've got a funding partner that I work with. So so we buy stuff. So we've done maybe four or five in the last sort of 14 months or something like that. Right. So he puts up all the money and we buy it through him. And then I'll sort of manage all the work and then we'll, we'll flip them. So we've nice. got one on the market at the moment. Brilliant. You know that question you always get from people? It's like, why are you not buying it? Like, yeah. If it's a good deal... Why you not buying it? Yeah, so I we, get that from negative fuckers like yours. We we only buy houses really if it fits the model. So yeah, I mean, we've yeah. bought been like three bed houses to flip. So it means like all the stuff out with that, like four in the blocks and flats and stuff like that, all goes to clients, which uh. is is good because it, it means I'm still supplying the clients with good quality deals. Do you know what I mean they're mm-hmm. genuinely discount? I think my average discount is like twenty five percent across. What the sort of locations deals. are you working in? So it, it's sort of fifty fifty between the borders and then like sort of West Lothian and Ed, surrounding areas of Edinburgh. So mm-hmm. it just depends on what the client wants, really. But Edinburgh, it's no can I really be working anymore for you know Central mm-hmm. Edinburgh and stuff like that? No, you know, for, it's for mainly the investment tier, tier three areas. Mm-hmm. So Edinburgh's yeah, like yeah. Sort of up to different tiers, isn't it? So it's like mainly tier three, which is like the sort of bottom tier, cheaper right. stuff. Because obviously we're rising interest rates and all that. When you're talking about purchasing for three hundred grand, uh, you know, on a six point five percent. Mortgage, mortgage with a seven percent arrangement fee and a six percent <laughs> ADS. Do you know what I mean? Figures are looking a bit yeah crazy at that level. So where are you picking up? So give us some successes. Can you give us any good examples? Any kind of case study deals that you've I done see, lately so, that you're kind of so, proud of? So just recently we we done one in Armadale that completed a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's probably worth eighty five ninety. Uh, sold it to a client from London for sixty one. Nice. Um, they'll spend about twenty on it. And it should be worth sort of one ten, something like that. And what's the story behind nice. that, and how did that become on your radar? Is that through some of my advertising? So I spend quite a lot of money every month on ads. How much? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thousands of pounds a month. Yeah. on advertising. But that's the other thing people need to realise, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Because it's not that easy. Again, people yeah. think, oh, they can go out and spend a couple hundred pound on yeah. Facebook ads. <laughs> we were talking about that with, with Craig at Quinergy and that. You know, and like people just expect that they'll get loads of leads coming in. Yeah, you still have to convert them and still have to get a big a lead a deal. Me and David mm. speak about that yeah. all the time. The skill set from getting someone's name and phone number to turning that into a deal is, mm. is massive. But I didn't start off by spending thousands of pounds a month yeah. on Facebook ads. I mean, it's all been reinvested from from yeah. other deals that I've done. So it's definitely possible, but mm. it doesn't happen overnight, as you say. And do you believe yeah. that? that sorry, I was going to say the progression from the guy starting out. Then is it just going on the market, just yeah. going on right move, uh, on relationships with? Agents. It depends how much time and how much money they've they've got and how much yeah. money they want to put into it. But that's certainly the way that I I done it in yeah. terms of the source and stuff. So that's that's what I would say to do again. Yeah, mm. just put that money back into building a website and Facebook ads and stuff. Did you learn all that yourself for the Facebook ads? Or no, I, I've got a guy that that does it. Thankfully. So you're not the face. You don't come up in the video going. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's no. kind of like images, just stock images and stuff like that. Stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Do you so. not think you could be more successful? Like, I'm not saying that you're not successful, but do you not think <laughs> if you're to put more of a personal brand on it and do like the selfie videos, like I'll come out and buy your house and all that, would that not be good for you? No. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. You don't know until you try, do you? But I, I think um, what I'm doing just now works really well. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't want to, to to change it up too much and then it not work as well. So I get yeah, yeah. a lot of stock coming through agents and letting agents mm-hmm. and other sources as well. So that's like a sort of blend between stuff that comes like free and stuff that mm-hmm. comes paid. So it works really nicely. Do you do many kind of selfie videos and that, or are you not so nah, much into that? not so many. I was probably a late starter on Instagram. Yeah. I, I've been on LinkedIn for, for like the whole time since I've been in property, but I only started a business Instagram this year. Okay. So Thanks. it's, um, I don't know, I just kind of flew below the radar and yeah. just done my own thing. Is that where a lot of the clients have came from, from LinkedIn that you've, you've Pretty met? Pretty much all of them have been yeah. from LinkedIn. Either LinkedIn or, or sort of referrals, maybe one or two from Facebook and maybe one from Instagram. The, the full thing's been LinkedIn. That's good, yeah. It's yeah. interesting to know. Local or are they from... Pretty much all of them are non-local. So That's interesting, a, a lot it? from London. I've just done one with a guy in Saudi. Got cash in buyers as well? Yeah, most of them are cash buyers. Yeah, we've got that a few as well. Mm. People... Uh, it's good. It gives you the local expert, the local knowledge on the ground that can provide that kind of hands-off service. That's exactly that. So it, uh, it means like we, there's more control over it. I think so. Yeah. So we can buy it for them. We'll manage the refurb and then we'll get it on board to to a letting agent. So mm. it works nicely. Yeah, that's well, good. If you ever need a letting agent, well, no, actually, David Smart's got a letting agency, hasn't he? So I don't do very much through here. Um, uh, me and David sold one in, in Easter House a couple of years ago, but I think that's probably about it in terms of Glasgow. How did, well, obviously, uh, David Smart, who we had on recently in the podcast, how did that relationship come about and what sort of business did you guys set up? 
yeah. together? How, so what sort of partnership? Yeah, so me and David have done a couple of deals just with each other, just co-sourcing stuff. That one in Easter House and then a couple of other ones. And then we sort of, I can't even remember how it happened really. He came out to see one of my flips and we just got chatting and decided to start Property Sourcing Network, it's called. So mm-hmm. it's a network of, of property sourcers that are all sort of pulling in the same direction. So I think we've got like 105 members or something like that. Yeah, that's crazy. How, like, um, because like, it's really, like I see the Zoom calls and I'm like, wow, that's a big yeah. number of people. And they're paying like 50 quid a month or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, how do you bring, how do you keep them and keep them coming back for 50 quid a month? What sort of yeah. value are you putting out there? So I think the biggest value for most people is just working with David and I in terms of actually selling the mm. stuff that they've got. Like we've done lots and lots of deals now with people that are in the group. So mm. if you think if they're out for 59 pound a month and they're, they're selling the odd deal for they're making 1500, it's well worth their right. time. So it's a, a Zoom call every two weeks. So we'll go through like a topic and um, we'll get a guest speaker on, you know, we'll, we'll add some kind of value with that. That gets mm. recorded and added to the, the member site so they can log in and look at it while they're having their tea or whatever mm-hmm. um, and then there's a WhatsApp and a Facebook chat as well so it, it, it's good because it's at a size now when people have got questions they'll put them in and then lots of different people reply to it so they get lots of different points of view so it's not just yeah. uh, it's not just the David and Matt show if you know what I mean there's yeah. lots of people in there that are doing a lot of stuff as well what do you think about this then? Because you do something similar, don't you? Yeah, I absolutely. I love, I love the concept. It's a good model. It's brilliant. Building the community. I've, I've not got as much time to go about look, viewing properties, but I've got all the <laughs> investor contacts over the years of doing it. So I know that the guys like uh, Man are starting out can go ahead and source it. Don't have the experience to pass it on an investor. And I can say, I can co-source for you. I've got an investor here. And that could, I, I cast in my eyes over it or Sam's eyes over it, you know, looking over it and going, yeah, yeah that's a good deal. And that mm. stands a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of weight behind it passing on as well. Why do you think there's no like? I always look at the Zoom screens, right? And there's it's all men, it's all males. Why do you think there's no women that come? Well, I know, we, we, I know we, there we, is we've some. We've got quite a lot of, uh, uh, of females in our group. That's yeah, good. yeah, it's good quite to see. a lot. Because it generally seems like it's male dominated, but yeah, yeah it's, it's a male dominated industry, few, isn't it? Uh, it's a shame yeah. because obviously, as having do- a daughter, you want the you know, more women pushing forward. But as a it's entrepreneurial, it's not like you know. I mean, like going out and sourcing a property, like it's <laughs> it's not like you, you know. I, I don't see why it appeals more to male than it does female I've just never been able to answer that question in my head you know like it's weird maybe starting a business I don't know if there's statistics, statistics around males versus females starting businesses we're going to go down and get ourselves so much help. we're going to get keep this here. one I think uh, <laughs> definitely um, oh so you as a young guy uh, if you got are you in a relationship if you're not getting kids no like, single no kids so you can no put dependence. full focus into like <laughs> yeah. basically so he's 20 hours a day so, uh, <laughs> 20 hours a day yeah. right? so like what does your day to day look like just I mean I can feel that you're quite a, a driven you know, young yeah. guys. So, what 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 sort of day, what's your day to day routine? So, normally I get up at five, which people normally laugh at and say, "Do you go on a nice bath or something yeah, like that?" Yeah. Which, which I don't. Right. Um, but not since I've been back my holiday the last couple of weeks. I'm just trying to get back into the swing of it. But but normally I'm up at five, um, and then I'll do a wee bit of work from home, and then I'll just go into the office about eight o'clock or something like that. And yeah. it just every single day is different. Depends like if I've got meeting with clients or if I'm going to viewings or. Every day is literally different, but not. Are you a natural, like, early riser? Or no, is that like you need not. to set the alarm clock? Yeah, it's forced. But you just feel that, is that when you feel like you're most productive and you feel better during yeah. the day for getting up and getting that work out there? I think, like, with property, most solicitors and people in it work nine to five, don't they? So mm-hmm. if you can get up earlier and start your day before they start, it means you can get most of the important work you've mm-hmm. got to do done before people start hassling you. Mm-hmm. So that's what I like about it. And also I think it builds quite a lot of momentum for like going through the day. Like the more stuff you can get done in a row and then you just hit the ground running. But it definitely, it's not been easy to force mm-hmm. myself to do that. But it's, um, and then once you get up at five, a few mornings, you're knackered by nine o'clock anyway. So it gets, <laughs> gets into a better routine, but. And what drives you then? Is it the money? Is it the, like I see a nice watch there. <laughs> is that, what, what type of watch is that? <laughs> it's a Rolex. I, I just got it a few weeks ago before I went on holiday. There but you go. I don't know anything about watches, but it looks <laughs> pretty, it looks, it looks I, pretty fancy. I, I've always liked nice things, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's just the money. Like see, mm. I, I really like doing what I do. I, I love putting deals together. I yeah. love working with investors. I, I love the whole concept of property. Um, and obviously the, the money you can make from it is uh, substantial as well once you've been mm-hmm. sort of doing it a wee while. So um, a bit of the money and just the, the, the love of the deal, I think, to be honest, it's, it does get quite addictive, doesn't it? Yeah. And obviously you've come into this at a kind of difficult time almost in property. I mean, people that have been in it a long time are saying, you know, come, you know, 
and these higher interest rates and all the rest of it. It was a difficult time because me and Matt were speaking about that just off air and they're like, you guys like yourself have been listening back to your podcast a year ago, two years ago, going, oh, it's a fucking nightmare now. We can't even find deals anywhere. Mm. All of a sudden there's deals everywhere but people are going to change the narrative yeah. and go, oh, but we've got high interest rates. Like they're, but <laughs> yeah. they're rents are through the roof. So everyone's going to always say something negative to stop themselves getting involved. Well, you said yourself you're not going to buy anything for next year, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be buying too fucking much <laughs> Give so, stress So it must be getting difficult If you're not doing it anymore no. <laughs> So yeah Has that been like difficult To like Do you meet those kind of Conversations where Investors are saying Oh well no it doesn't work Because of high interest rates now Or is that where You've got the advantage because you've got the foreign investors who are buying the cash anyway so it yeah. doesn't really matter I, I saw a mix like when the whole mini budget thing happened there was a bit of wobble and I mm. had a couple of people pulling out of stuff and I was thinking like fuck this could end up getting quite messy here if things slow mm. down but ever since then and since rates have been creeping down it's been totally fine and as you say some of the stuff I do is lower value like under 40k so that they're cash anyway um, so that definitely helps having a blend of sort of different mm. property types because those mm. those still keep churning out the same results and how do you deal with negative people like me then who <laughs> say I'm your investor right and I'm like no I'm, uh, no, I'm really not into that it's not in the right area and no, the windows are no double glazing yeah. and it's an EPC you know E or something like that no it's not it's not quite for me there's only so many conversations like that you can have right before you're just like I need to ditch this guy so yeah. how do you how do you deal with that? I think it, it, it just comes back to, to working with the right people, doesn't it? Um, and I think the longer you do it, the more people want to work with you. So mm. by nature, you get to sort of weed out the people that necessarily aren't a good fit. Um, so yeah. I'm really lucky to work with a lot of people now that are just dead easy going and they understand and they trust me and it just makes things a lot easier. But I certainly have had people that have been difficult to deal with. Yeah. But it's, it's everything. You put difficult. it in such a nice way. Right? <laughs> people, people that are not a nice fit. I would say people are fucking pain the arse. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I remember it because like you get excited when you get that first investor or yeah. you get that client to work with. You're think wow I've got an investor somebody for my deals and then they're just constantly throwing back yeah. no no yeah. no and you're like you get a really good deal and someone tries to tear it for yeah. and you're like what this is a phenomenal deal <laughs> <laughs> well, why are you not buying it fuck it <laughs> <laughs> I don't really get the why are you not buying it very uh, often that's not something that I really come across no, no I don't really know why yeah. but it's just um, I don't know I think it's always ch I've changed tack the last few years and went fucking crazy on building the asset base and the portfolio that it's almost like when I'm passing a deal they're like why are you not buying it yeah. I'm like I'm fucking not like, <laughs> you can't buy every single thing and I've yeah. always, always sourced it's like like, oh. mm. So where do you think I mean like where will it go for you then because like you're still so like young so obviously you have started the estate agency as well yeah like you said you've got a different avenue there yeah. so like did you want to be an estate agent or is it just naturally progressed and <laughs> like, no I, I definitely don't want to be an estate agent um which is maybe not the best thing to say but <laughs> it's just a, a natural progression of of keeping things in house and uh -huh. having no wastage so obviously when you're dealing with off-market sellers there's people that, that want to sell but it's probably not going to be a good fit for an investor so like whether you know they can't take a discount or it's too nice or it's too expensive or whatever the reason is um you know they, they want to go on the market so now mm -hmm. having the facility to put that on the market it just means we get to keep everything in house yeah. um so it, it works really really well and probably just continue keeping it for the stock that we don't have an exit for originally um i mean simplifying property sourcing and, and property as a whole is finding the stock and then exiting from it yeah. so the more exits you've got available mm. the, the easier things and are like, like to put it in simple terminology basically if you're going out and you get a lead in and you go out to somebody's house and they're not getting <laughs> they're not getting what they want for it basically because yeah. your first route is you're trying to get a discount right for your investor yep, absolutely but then if they say no get to you know chase you down the garden gate <laughs> you can then go wait a minute we can get you full va full market value yeah. if we put it through the state agency so that you're not losing the business absolutely mm -hmm. yeah, that's yeah. It. i monetize every lead that's coming in exactly. Makes sense. and i think yeah when you're spending a good amount of money on on advertising you need to do that yeah, um, yeah. because there's no guarantees on what's going to come through the door the next mm -hmm. month so and how do these people react then because obviously 
you don't want them to go, oh, he's just a chancer. I'm not going to want him to sell, you know, I'm not going to get him to sell my house. So has it just been about transparent? And is it all exactly about transparency that. and saying, like, we could offer you this? Like, yeah. how does the conversation go? If you go so that, that's exactly it. So the first part of call is, is to buy it if it works for a flip. Um, if not, it'll go to a client. And if not, we can put it on the market. So I normally just help you look at it. But it doesn't actually matter to me whatever route you take. We'll still mm. make money off it. So mm. whatever suits you best. And, and most of the time, people that, that, that are willing to give a discount, that's the route they want to go down mm. you know their primary motivation is not is not the top price yeah it's fine that finding the finding and kind of fulfilling that client need then so so to speak now exactly depending on where it goes yeah, yeah. exactly so and, and, and people are, are are pretty honest about it a lot of the time so look i need i need this gone quickly and we can facilitate that or we can put it on the market so is a state agency set up locally to you then where a lot of the purpose are being sourced yeah so it, yeah. It, it's it's probably about a 50-50 split again between right. like sort of Edinburgh stuff that we've done um, and then just sort of border stuff yeah. as well so it just depends but I, I, I've got like a viewing agent through the viewings and stuff like that yeah. so it's quite sort of not hands off but it's quite removed like I'm not there opening mm. the door and stuff Is it going like to be a, a, a high street presence or more an online estate? I honestly don't know I've, I've been torn the last couple of weeks thinking about mm. it so I was just back my holiday and I was trying to think about it there and I've still not came to a conclusion about what route I want to go yeah, down yeah. but I'll probably be guided by sort of the market to be honest because mm. it's probably not the best time to to become an estate agent. When I said looking looking forward, so you got some quite good press. So you were in the newspaper <laughs> and all that, weren't yeah. you? Yeah. So uh, how did that come about? Did somebody just hear about you. So where my office is in Gala Shields, the Border Telegraph papers over the road. Ah. Um, so I've spoken to them a couple of times about stuff, and, yeah. and then just decided to do a sort of offer to launch it, and then they, they put the article out. So that's good. It well, nice. it works because it came over my radar and all yeah, that. And good. then I see that about the agency yeah so we were doing like a, a 99 pound estate agency offer right. so like we'll sell your house for local agents would have been delighted <laughs> to see that yeah. there, was a, there was a few yeah but it's uh, uh, it's just a, like a, a bit of a, a sort of nice thing to do because the, the way the estate agency works it's like a monthly subscription to right move mm. and stuff like that so i'm paying that anyway so if we can help somebody sell their house for for no cost I, this is what i love because like if you come in there as a bit of a disruptor I just love seeing that because you get these, especially yeah. in the property industry, yeah. you've got a lot of these old school, just like, that haven't, that haven't evolved, that don't do any Facebook marketing or ads exactly. and stuff like that. You come in there, yeah. I'll save your house for 99 pounds. This, this, this is what I love about that model as well. It's just like, when you're focused more on the client's end result, you can actually do, do give them the best service. I cannot stand, yeah. you know, a state agent that's been in a state agency for 30 years and think they know property, but mm -hmm. if, you, if Mrs. Smith doesn't want to put her house in the market, because she wants a quick sale yeah. or she's wanting to take, they, they've got no fucking option. They They're bye. like, well, okay, sorry. Well, I, okay, we can list it for you. Yeah, but don't want to list it. I just want a, a cash buyer. I want a quick sale. They're like, oh, well, and it's all this like, oh, can I do it? You're going in with the, the, put the, with the hat on and go, well, I'm, I'm trying to help you sell your property. What, what do you need from it? Yeah. And that's to me, that's a real estate agency for, mm. I suppose from the sellers now, but you're, you're acting for the buyers if it's an investor that are buying it. Yeah, but I think that's the more modern way mm. estate agency, isn't it? Like, it's just for me it's just the exits like yeah. just having as many options to get in rid of the stock as possible really so like mm. it just makes so much sense and, and the borders is quite like that you know there's mm. not many people doing advertising and stuff like that it's quite old fashioned so mm. if you can come in and, and make it a bit more modern I think we'll, we'll do pretty well and do you think that's possible because there is the argument obviously that people say well you, you can't do everything well so you can't be the guy that buys like, off market discounted properties and the guy that sells the you know 400 grand house at the best possible price do you know what yeah. I mean but do you believe you can offer all those services and 100% I think it's exactly the same process really but it's just, it's just you know right. it's finding the stock and then just exiting it so it's the same process whether we buy it a client buys it or we put it on the market and someone else buys it so mm. I do get what you mean about in terms of specialising and stuff, mm. but I think property, you can do very well out of like sort of doing a few different things. You don't necessarily just have to be doing one thing and then that's it. There's a lot of snobbery in the estate agency yeah. world, isn't there? Because like, you know, you'll get, I better not mention any brands and stuff <laughs> like that, but there's always brands that come about when, you know, like in the West End of Glasgow, there's a couple of brands that, because it's quite an affluent area, or like Bears Den and all yeah. that, and people want to sell a house with a specific brand because mm. they've got that sign outside their house because it's kind of well known they sell all the big fancy properties so yeah. it's almost that thing like i want to sell my house with that mm. that agent you know what I mean? it's, it, yeah. it's a bit it's a bit weird that way uh, but it's an interesting time for state agency as well because i just yeah. read recently that like purple bricks who were massive 
up until recently, they've pretty much drifted off the radar. Have you yeah, noticed that? Yeah, like, I've seen anything. There's really. hardly yeah. anything. I mean, I think they, they had a, they went pretty much bust and then they had a buyout or something yeah. like that. Uh, but it's going to yeah. be hard for traditional estate agents in this coming time. I think, think so. be down, but yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think that's what my bread and butter is always going to be the off market so, stuff yeah. and working right. with clients and, and buying stuff myself because um, it, it just it just makes more sense. It's, it's probably more robust, I think, with the times coming mm. up, but especially because I've got a good bank of buyers there. If stuff does slow mm. down, there's more deals available, then I'll yeah. do better out of that. Whereas a high street agent that's only selling people's houses I'm not gonna, are yeah. probably going to struggle, I would think. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. I think that, um, I mean, if you, obviously it's early days with the state agency, but I just think that there's good potential there for somebody like yourself to really go in and dominate like a local market as well. Yeah. Like if you can just put out content there, like based on the local area, even if it's nothing to do with property, but just um, getting that, having that outreach through the social media channels by videos and all the rest of it, you can really establish a good name for yourself. I've seen people do it in Glasgow and you think, God, that's going to be really difficult to crack through. But, um, you know, a guy I'm thinking about here who listens to the podcast, Fraser Kelly, uh, you might have seen him on Instagram. He helps us out at the Glasgow Networking Meet as well. He's now the resident estate agent. Uh, he's done phenomenally well in such a short space of time, all to do with putting out selfie videos on, well, I'm not saying just that. He's obviously good at his job as well. <laughs> <laughs> like, but he's good on the social media. I think yeah, it's just yeah. the key, do you know what I mean? Just yeah. Always... Um, so yeah there's been that's probably why there's been a big shake up in the property industry in the last probably 10 years because of social media it's probably been seen as an old school grey hair you know private meeting no one knows about property and all of a sudden everyone's putting all over Instagram and shit yeah. and it's like oh well, do you know Emily Hennigan mm, so no. you ever come across her no. so she was our estate agent at the Glasgow Property uh, Networking as well and she blew up on TikTok like just like I mean she was hundreds of thousands of views and stuff on her videos and uh, she's now out in Dubai doing really well out in Dubai um, but all to do again like she went full it's personal on brand stuff mm, TikTok yeah. Yeah. so important isn't it uh, on, per- on the, the personal side of things so yeah you, you must get a lot of uh, DMs in in your, in your inbox do you from people that are aspiring to be like yourself then yeah. do you how, how do you 100%. kind of I think that how do you treat them that's probably <laughs> do you reply why to them <laughs> yeah I, I try and reply to, to, to most people I'm, I'm um, but it's, it's the same as what you guys say on here I think that you can't reply to everybody and right. I think that's why the group thing that me and David does works so well because like we probably can't dedicate that much time to people for free because we're so yeah. busy but for a, a pretty low cost they can come in and get mm. quite a lot of access to us and other people mm. so that's um, that's probably why it's taken off so much I think mm. Um, but yeah well, having that community is good I think so yeah, yeah. and it's, it's really good for us as well because we've obviously got clients there that need deals and uh-huh. we're only two people whereas if there's a yeah. hundred other boots on the ground of other people out there looking for deals that maybe don't have exits for them it just means more deal supply and, and, and more deals done for everyone really so and and how do you how are you dealing with the challenges of starting a business then obviously like you know can think straight away like the right move fees are no cheap and stuff like that is that uh, is that, is that cool like, have you got enough money coming in to Aye. support all that the last uh, three or four months has been really really good um, yeah. and because I'm doing a couple of different things in it as well it's quite good because obviously the flip stuff that I do is generating quite big lumps of cash as is the source and stuff mm-hmm. and then the estate agency and the kind of smaller sourcing deals just keep things ticking over so how much you made in the last say <laughs> three months last quarter the, the last three months I've done just over a hundred grand um, in three months I was just t- adding it up before including this month That's I've done off, about man. 130 in the last four it's good job phenomenal good. Um, well done so it's, it's been really really good love hearing that and, yeah. and that's through um, pretty much sourcing the bulk of it's from from being sourcing stuff to clients and investors um, I sold a flip in August um, and then I've got obviously got another flip on the market just now so hopefully that sells and then we're just buying one next week as well in Edinburgh so oh, so that's taken into account the flip income as well one flip we sold in August so it's a joint venture how much was the flip the numbers in terms of like how much profit you're making out the flip <laughs> so I'm just trying to see obviously <laughs> no, like, fine. You know, get, it, yeah. we get bought it from uh, we bought it it was worth about 110 in Livingston we, we bought it for 82 we spent 38 on it I think in, including everything staging and whatnot, and we sold it for 176 so I think we made I don't know 44 or something like that off it mm-hmm. so you're still making 55 in the last three months more than that, yeah. Oh, and yeah. sourcing. So that's split with, so that, split with, my, joint venture. with my joint venture partner. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Mm, brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. 
And that's not exactly including your subscription for your no. group as well. No, that's nah. just a different. That's different. Just from from well. David and I, yeah. Hats off, mate. That's yeah. brilliant. It's good, but it, it's so possible when you just put focus and, and yeah. sort of dedicate your life to something. Mm. I and mean, fair enough, I've been doing it for three years, but it's not thirty years. So it's not a huge amount of time, is it? Yeah, no, yeah, definitely not. And it is actually so possible just once you get half decent at something and yeah. you learn a high value skill. And you just build yourself gradually. It doesn't mm-hmm. happen overnight, but mm-hmm. it's definitely possible. It's good. It's really good. I need really to get this letting agency. <laughs> going, right? Does anyone want to buy a letting agency? I'm getting, a, I'm getting in business. I'm not selling one. But I, I've just been so lucky to meet the right people at the right time. Like my, my funding guy as well, I think in the last 14 months, I've raised over half a million from him mm-hmm. um, to do these projects, one, including the one in legals. And right. it's just like meeting the right people at the right time. Like genuinely, and people take a liking to you and you, you do a good job and they come back. Yeah, it's you showing up as well, though, to not to, to not like not trying to discredit you, but you're showing up every day and you're doing <laughs> yeah. the work and you're doing the effort. Now, you're putting effort in it so this yeah. guy saw something in you that yeah he can put the money in it but you're the one that's the boots on the ground that's getting the deals understanding what I can sell for and understanding how the value can be added as well Absolutely. so finding you. a funding partner like that's yeah. got to be a, that's got to be a topic in itself so like <laughs> so obviously like people are listening to this and I wish I just had a funding partner like, <laughs> but the funding fun we've is what 20 grand of profit in the last three months 80 yeah, grand so of sourcing yeah. yeah and so that's the skill but how did you find the funding partner so that was a referral from from another guy that's in property um, and he lives sort of locally to me and he's a good friend of mine now so right. I'm just back from but Dubai. you didn't know him like before no no not oh. at all no not at all and uh, he's sort of seen what I was up to and then he, he exited the business and we just decided to do something together so it's just again right place at the right time and and, and has that on. gone well in terms of do you feel that like you know it's you're, you're both do, do both people feel like they're getting something out of it you know how when yeah. you go into partnership no, quite I, often I, I you think, can feel um, from my point of view he funds 100% of everything and he doesn't do any of the work so I think it works for him right. and he's based in Dubai now and then it works for me definitely do you know I mean I've got a, a funding you're running that, about that doing I all the work have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. but you're happy to do that yeah and again it's like mm. you're doing all the work but it, it, it's the trades guys that are, that are in the, the place. Every, obviously, you've got to manage them and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But it's not as if I'm, you know, working in a warehouse yeah. chain to a desk. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's still a good life. So yeah. it's just the uh, right place at the right time and, and just doing a good job and consistently showing up and, yeah. and finding the right deals as well. It's just a skill set behind it. Do you know what I mean? It's the, the deal is, is the lifeblood of everything, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. So you loving the flips then? Yeah, they're, they're good. The one we're buying in Edinburgh, we're just going to sell straight on, probably through auction. Mm-hmm. Um the dealing with the trades guys is probably my least favourite part of the mm. job. It's just it's a headache as everybody knows, but it's um the ones we've done so far have been mm. suited to 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 doing full renovations, whereas this one is it's it's an alright next, so we'll just we'll just sell it straight on. Where's the focus for you for you growing in the future then? Bank the cash just now and build your own portfolio, or are you going to just keep 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 yeah. trading and keep getting the income? In? I think probably what what I'm going to do is just buy stuff outright in yeah, cash yeah. And, and not take any lending on it. And then once I've got a few of them, just use that to borrow against buying yeah, more yeah. stuff. I think um, just because of the guys that I work with, a, a lot of them have got pretty big portfolios and and they're hurting. Uh, um, lev- and leveraged high at the moment, yeah. Exactly and as good as it sounds that having all this equity on paper doesn't really mean an awful lot yeah. so like it's almost like if you never sell those properties it's almost like what's what's the point in having all that equity I think mm. obviously you've got the cash flow coming in but it's all on paper isn't it the equity mm. so I think about it a lot and to be honest with you I'm not entirely sure I'm just kind of focusing on the here and now yeah. and not thinking too much about the future really but I definitely will build a portfolio for the long term but yeah. it just doesn't seem that attractive at the moment buying stuff for, for 200 quid when I can go and you know, sell it to a client and make considerably more. So, mm-hmm. it's and, and and where are you? Obviously, you're you're making decent cash at the moment. Are you reinvesting that in the business at the moment to grow your business? Exactly that, Nick. Yeah. So, like, the more access to more deals I've got, the better I'll do. And then, obviously, mm-hmm. if I start hanging on to the odd one and two myself, the, the more that's coming in the door, the more we can do. So, you're going to take staff on or anything like that. Or? So, yeah. So, I hired someone just before I went on holiday there. Yeah. Um, to come in and do the sales yeah. stuff. So. That was a bit of an experience, which is a sort of next step in my journey. But um, a good experience or bad experience? Not fantastic, I have right. to say. So just, she, just <laughs> she stayed for for three days and then handed in her notice on the Sunday night. So, Why was that? Um, it just wasn't for her. Just yeah. wasn't what right. she expected to do. In terms, right. she just came from a management background instead of sales, and I just don't think it was for her. Okay. But, so, so how can you improve on that for the next one? Then where do you think you can? I, again, this is what I mean about just taking time out to think about what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, but probably just get someone in to do more of. I've, I've got a virtual assistant that does all my admin, so yeah. I don't do any admin at all, which is quite nice. Filipino, no? Uh, Bangladesh. All right. <laughs> yeah, but he's been with me for like I don't know 
maybe two years. Yeah. Um, so he's really good actually. But so I don't do any admin, but I just need someone in to like answer the phone and send the home reports and book the viewings and stuff like that. So mm. that's the the next stage. It's just going through that pain of that putting the ad up and interviews and hiring them and notice periods and stuff like that again. So what I did was I don't know if this will work for you, but definitely worked for me. So I put an ad. Um, advert on indeed right uh, indeed website yeah, that's what I've done. and you get like hundreds <laughs> loads and you just get bombarded you get swamped and you're like oh, this is too much yeah. i can't deal with all this i can't phone these people i can't i don't know who's good i can't even be bored looking at their cvs and stuff like that so what i do is i just send out one message to everybody and just say if you're interested in the job please send a short video two minutes maximum and please send it through to my whatsapp and out of say 150 people, you get like three videos. <laughs> like it's it a good idea, literally though. narrows really it down idea. that much. And yeah. you think to yourself, do you know what? If somebody's really wanting this job, and like you know they're passionate about it, and they think that it'll fit them, and you know you're, you know they're into it, then they will send take the time to do that short video. Okay, putting yourself on camera, it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea, and I might miss the odds gem here and there but it definitely worked for me it's and it's that attitude to take that action to do it isn't it's it? a huge That's time saver and the the guy i got just recently like he's worked out brilliant he's been three months now um i said to him i'd look at giving him a pay rise i think after six months i've already given him a pay yeah. rise do you know what i mean so he's like what to keep him happy as well and that's worked for me so perfect that's a good idea that's yeah really good idea yeah so don't know. Nice, uh, anything else that we've not covered? Like, I mean, you, you're pretty much concentrating on that local that local area mm. just now? Yeah, just pretty much, I think. I don't think, I, I don't like deviating too far. I think when I first started, I, w- I was going here and everywhere chasing these deals and I just think mm. wait and, and become a specialist in a couple of different areas and then wait till the yeah. deals come to you is, is the way that it normally works now. How can we get the deals, mate? How can we get on your, <laughs> how can we so get? I, I've got a free mailing list. Right. Um, I, I'm completely full for, for new clients and probably will be for the next year, nice at least I would say. Yeah, yeah. And just nice place to be, not desperate for it. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I think you don't have to be desperate for it if, uh, if you do a good job I think and you build up the credibility in the marketplace I just you don't think you have to be desperate you just wait till the right deal comes in marry it up with, with an investor you've worked with before and it's it's good it's, it's fulfilling yeah and if people obviously want a you've got an Instagram page haven't you yeah Instagram Matt. so Matt Morrison property and then just Matt Morrison on LinkedIn is, is my main ones flood your DMs we'll That's flood that. your yeah. DMs yeah. Yeah. I'm on the show notes mate <laughs> yeah, just make sure you start charging for that consultation call <laughs> 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 like that first hour yeah uh, oh that That's reminds cool. me we did a we've done a, a giveaway on the uh, YouTube on the Sorry, 200th episode, ah, yeah, we've yeah. done a giveaway, a free one-to-one call with myself and Stephen. Wow. So we've actually had quite a lot. <laughs> <I>, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, I know, we've had about uh, 10 people reach out so far for it. <laughs> 3,000 listeners. <laughs> nah, there's been more than that. If you look on the YouTube channel, I think we're about, we'll be coming to an end. By the time this podcast comes out, actually, it's probably already ended, but we need to pick our lucky winner. Go for a bit. Uh, so you've been, you've been listening to podcasts? Then? Yeah, I listen to pretty much all of them, Nick. Fantastic. Listen to pretty much all of them, yeah. So as I said, because I've never done any courses or anything like that, it's just all been from stuff like yeah. this. And then singling out people that you hear are doing well and just yeah. harassing them until they tell you what they're up to. <laughs> well, well, I'm glad you've managed to get some value. And 100%. I'm yeah, jealous 100%. that you're making more money than me. Yeah. I've been doing that a couple of years. I appreciate <laughs> it. Um, Shout out to David Smart for suggesting getting Matt on. It's been a great chat as well. Aye. No, nice brilliant. Day. Thanks yeah. for taking the time. Thanks a lot, guys. Cheers.